In this video, I'm going to show you how a handicap in golf is calculated using the new world handicapping system. I'm going to show you what a handicap index is, why that number is so valuable, and how we arrive at that number. So do you need to be a rocket scientist in order to calculate a handicap using the new standards? Well, the short answer is maybe, kind of, yeah. But the good news for you is we're going to break it down. I'm going to use layman's terms, and I'm going to show you how that's calculated the best I can and the easiest way I can show you. Now, in a few moments, I'm going to break down how the handicap index is calculated. I'm going to show you an equation, but make sure you don't stop there because there are some important caveats to this as we progress. So make sure you stay tuned to the entire video so you get everything. The main ingredient to creating a handicap index is called a score differential. Now this is basically what you shoot on any given day, but in a really, really confusing way. <laughs> Let me break it down for you. So a score differential is calculated by this equation, which is 113 divided by the slope, and I'm going to tell you what slope means in just a second then that's all going to be multiplied by your adjusted gross score, adjusted gross score. Then you're gonna subtract the course rating and you're gonna subtract something called PPC, which is basically the playing conditions that happened the day that you played. And I will break all of these down, the slope, adjusted gross score, course rating, and PPC next. That is how you come up with a score differential, which is going to be a very key concept here as we create the handicap index. All right, now any scorecard that you have is going to have something on the back or maybe sometimes it's in this area, but it's going to show you the slope rating and the course rating. On this course, Cypress to Meadow, from the blue tees, our course rating is 73.8 and our slope rating is 139. So the course rating is what a scratch golfer would generally shoot from that set of tees. So from the blue tees, a scratch golfer on this par 72 course could shoot more like a 73.8. Let's round that up to 74. From the white tees, he's going to shoot better than even par. And as we work our way down, from the teal tees, he should shoot seven strokes below normal par, which on this course is 72. Who sets the course rating, you might ask? A representative from your local governing body of golf will come to your course and perform observations, measurements, and calculations to determine the difficulty and assign a course rating along with a slope rating for each of the tees. So speaking of slope, let's cover that next. So the slope rating is the measure of its relative difficulty for a bogey golfer, someone who shoots 20 over and around, in relation to what a scratch golfer would shoot. And again, it's not to say that a bogey golfer is going to shoot 139. This is a complex calculation which we'll cover in a separate video. But basically, this is a number assigned by either the USGA, the RNA, or your local governing golf body. And just suffice it to say, we need to take this number. So you don't need to do any calculations. We're, we're just going to plug this back into our other equation that we discussed earlier. An average golf course would have a slope rating of 113. So anything less than 113 means it's easier than normal and anything more than 113 means it's more challenging than a normal course, whatever normal means. Let's move on to the next item here in the equation, which is adjusted gross score. This is a score determined by the actual score you shoot on each hole, along with any adjustments due to holes you might not have finished, conceded holes, and something called net double bogey, which is the most important and worth a further deep dive down. Yep, I know, another layer that we've got to unpeel here. Now I'm going to do my best to explain net double bogey. So basically you can't get more than two strokes over the par of the hole. So this is a par five. Your maximum score on this hole would be a seven. Okay, we'll write seven there. That's the max on any hole, except except for holes that you're getting strokes on. So let's say I'm getting a stroke 
on the one and the two hole here. On these holes, I could get up to a triple bogey, meaning on this hole, I could take up to a seven here because that's a triple bogey. It's a par four and I could take a seven, whereas on the second hole, a par four that I'm not getting a stroke on, I can only take up to a six for, for handicap scoring purposes. Now, let's say on this hole I really blew up and I shot an eight, okay? An eight is four strokes over par, and I can only be three strokes over par because I'm getting that net double bogey, which is the two strokes plus the one for the handicap stroke. So the worst I could ever score on this hole is actually a seven. Some courses call this equitable stroke control. You might have heard that term. But the max I could take on this hole is a seven, and that will adjust my score down. That's how net double bogey works. Okay, so we've covered course rating, slope rating, and adjusted gross score, which means we just need to figure out what this PCC adjustment is all about. PCC stands for Playing Conditions Calculation. It's basically a determination of how hard the course played on a particular day that you played it. For instance, if you had extreme weather like strong wind or very wet conditions or you had super long rough, ridiculously fast and firm greens or some other exceptionally tough playing conditions and enough people played the course poorer than normal that day, this could positively impact your score. If, on the other hand, the course played easier than it normally does because the conditions were so perfect or so ideal, and that day enough people also played better than they normally would have, your score could be negatively impacted slightly. Now, the PCC adjustment is nothing that you have any impact on yourself. It's determined automatically by your local governing body. Here in Florida, we have the Florida State Golf Association. And that is something you have no control over. The range of adjustment is between minus one and plus three strokes, and it will be applied to everyone's score who played that particular course on that particular day. And again, that gets applied to everyone that played that day. Okay, now we have everything we need to complete the calculation for the score differential for any given round. So now we're going to put together a sample score differential. So let's go back to our equation, which is 113 divided by the slope measurement. We're going to use the white t's here, and 134 is the slope measurement from the white t's. That's then going to be multiplied by our adjusted gross score. I've shot 78 here on a number of times, so we'll use 78 as the adjusted gross score. We're going to go ahead and then subtract our rating from the white t 71.5 and let's say we played on a normal day which means that's a zero again that can be anywhere from minus one to plus three but well, we're going to say on a normal day that's zero now let's go ahead and do the math here okay so we've got 113 divided by 134, that's going to give us 0.843, we'll, we'll round it there, and again we're going to multiply that by 78 minus 71.5 equal to 6.5, this is now going to equal 0.843 three times 6.5, I sound like a robot, 5.479, and I suppose we can round that to 5.5. So if I were to shoot 78, my score differential on this normal day on this course is 5.5. So now that we have the score differentials, how do we put those together to create a handicap index? Let's take a look at that next. In order to establish a handicap, you will need to have at least 54 holes played for your handicap. Now that can be a mixture of either 18 hole rounds or nine hole rounds. And once you've played 20 rounds, they will take your top eight score differentials to establish your handicap index. So this is my official card. In fact, these used to be printed. Now it's all electronic. 
But my Handicap 5.5, it's showing that it's using my latest 20 rounds. And these are all the scores that I've shot my last 20 rounds. And wherever you see an asterisk, that's a score that it's using. These are my best scores with my best score differentials. And it's using eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scores. Those eight scores all have a differential, just like we just calculated, attached to each of them. And the average of those eight scores then becomes what you see 5.5 right there. All right, so we're going to launch the USGA Gin app, which is the official app if you're here in the United States where I am. You can see my handicap index is 5.5. Why does this number matter? Well, let's say I'm going to play a round of golf and I'm going to play with some friends. Let's say we're going to play my home course. This is searchable so that you can see any course in the country just by typing the name. And we're going to choose Cypress to Meadow here. Now, again, here's my handicap index. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to add some golfers here. So we're going to add Mr. Donald Trump and we'll add Mr. Joe Biden and we'll add my cousin Stephen who lives up in Massachusetts. Now we've got some new calculations here. We still see my handicap index of 5.5. We see my cousin Steve's 19.8, Joe Biden playing to a 6.7 and the Donald himself playing 2.5. Now, we're going to select a tee box here. We're going to go ahead and say we're going to play from the white tees. And now some new numbers are filling themselves in here. We've got uh, the handicap index that stays the same. Now, on this particular course, my course handicap is 7, Steve's is 24, Joe's is 9, and Donald's is 4. All right, we're going to briefly pause to talk about course handicap. And I could take us down a whole rabbit hole here, but I don't want to get too deep into the weeds. Suffice to say that a course handicap is an adjustment based on the difficulty of that course, slope, and course rating. Basically, if you play a harder course, Carrollwood seems to be a moderately harder course in relation to an average course. Therefore, my handicap on this particular course goes from 5.5 up to a 7. Now, if this was an easier course, it could potentially go down. So my handicap might go from 5.5 to a 4 on an easier course than average. But I digress. Let's press on. We're all playing off Mr. Trump's handicap here who is going to be receiving zero strokes. I will receive three from Donald because his course handicaps a four, mine's a seven. My cousin Steve, who's a 24, is actually going to get 20 shots from the Donald. And Joe Biden is going to get a healthy five shots. Now let's say we're playing a nine-hole match. On a nine-hole match, I'm going to get two strokes from Mr. Trump. My cousin's going to get 10 strokes, and Joe is going to get 3. So let me take on a scorecard so that we can see how this works. Now, on any scorecard, you're going to see a handicap listed here. This is a ranking of each of the holes on this course. And on this 9 holes, it's going to be ranked from 1 to 9, with number 1 being the hardest hole on the course, the number 1 handicap. Since I'm getting 2 strokes from the Donald, I'm going to circle that one. And I'm going to circle this fifth hole. So on the eighth and the fifth hole, I'm getting a stroke from Donald. Now Joe is going to be getting a third stroke from the Donald. So he'll get a stroke here on number three. And Steve is going to get all of these holes. He's going to receive a stroke from Donald. And on top of that, he's going to get a second stroke on the hardest hole for his 10th stroke. So on the 8th hole, he's going to get two shots from Donald Trump playing him in a match. And that's how a handicap index can be really important when you're playing your buddies. It can also be really important when you're playing a tournament because all club sanctioned tournaments will require the handicap index. Okay guys, I don't know about you, but my brain is pretty much scrambled at this point. So if I missed anything, please do let me know in the comments and I'm gonna do my best to respond to your questions. If this video was helpful to you in any way, I would appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn notifications on for this channel because we're releasing golf content like this, both educational and fun, every week on Let's Play Through. And I'd love to have you back here for another video.
So hopefully you've got a better grasp on how the handicap system works. Now it's just time to play better golf. I hope you do that too. I'll catch you back here next week on another edition of Let's Play Through.